some noodles. Jay Dog back to answer some more goddamn questions. I got some questions printed out that are from a day or two before, but doing these first because a couple of them are order ones on the same goddamn pages which I'm printed. But the first one at the top, always again, goes the front of the motherfucking line. Got it this morning when I woke up and it was in there, so it just came in today. So I do it today. And that's from Adam Benenson, aka Layla Lover, goddammit. And he just says, hey, J Dog, paid question. My favorite, goddammit. No doubt about it. I want to be averaging two a day, goddammit. I don't think that's a very tall fucking order out of 2,000 watchers per fucking day minimum, first 24 hours of every goddamn video. I, I think that's more than not asking for that much, goddammit. So, bastard of the sky, get your shit together, motherfucker. Stop fucking me ass like you have about everything else. He says, uh, can you check out and shout out this band I recently discovered called Electrocutioner? Rotten sounding thrash from New York. They are a newer band. Their new album is out in a few weeks. Could you review their newest single, Seven Lamps of Fire or Collector's Death? Cheers, Adam B. Lady Lover. So, yeah, I'll give this band a whole full shout out. So, and I did, I listened to that Seven Lamps a Fire. I went to their goddamn YouTube page. Took me a minute or two to find it. Uh, I found the Seven Lamps song. But I, when I went to the actual electric, they just they have a, um, their own uh, channel, which is good for them, you know, starting things off because they're a new band. Um, just called electric, Electrocutioner. Probably type in Electrocutioner Band. Or, at, or if you just search Electrocu Electrocutioner Seven Lamps of Fire, they have an official music video, which was kind of cheesy. Um, but nonetheless, you know, they're, they're trying to do something. Uh, the song itself, I listened to that, and I listened to, I think it was, it was one with this greenish-looking cover, yellow logo at the top, uh, Rise of the uh, Nucro, yeah, nu like Nuke, like the band Nuke, 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 Nuke you know what I mean, that shit. Uh, Nucromancer, like instead of Necromancer, they're trying to be, you know, kind of clever and cool. Rise of the Nucromancer. Um, all in all, I liked both songs. I thought they were enjoyable. I liked the uh, Nucromancer better, though. It was raw. I liked the vocals a little bit better. The the uh, Seven Lamps, I thought was a good metal song, but it had a bit of that, uh, maybe it's because I was watching the video, too. Flash it back. It had a bit of that uh, kind of like '80s cheese. You know what I mean? Like when it's when bands like, like I guess metal church, uh, hair metal bands were definitely did this when they were cheese for fucking day one. But you know what I'm saying? That '80s stuff, and they had like those music videos and stuff, and it was they're like almost like it could just be me this just could be my impression so don't fucking take this out again people coming over here saying stupid as fuck shit this is my interpretation my opinion how my brain processed it looking at it uh, honestly even to be completely honest with you uh, as much as i like the songs even king diamond would fall in this category by the time you know i would say by the time family video family ghost video came out but for sure by them uh which is great i love that of them but when they did videos for like welcome home and stuff it just had that Kind of just cheesy fucking commercial, unhumble fucking attitude. Like, you could, like, when you, I don't know, when you look at, like, uh, Nuns Have No Fun and then the first two albums, yeah, even on, up to Don't Break the Oath before, you know, break it up. It just, they seemed like they had this humble, raw fucking walking around the crowd attitude. And then by then, it's just this, this, this almost rock star. Oh, we're fucking hanging out with goddamn Kiss now. Putting out music videos and it's a little bit more produced. And you could tell they're going with the times. Like, all right, this sound is kind of what's in. So let's tweak our sound for this. Like, kind of that vibe. Is that, does that make any fucking sense? That's just kind of how I always, how I, my brain processes and solved it. And that's why I kind of like, uh, but I think most people understand this. Guys in the underground shit like that. Like, a lot of other stuff like you just... The guys that were in the fucking know. When you bring up demo releases or shit like that, or bands that were still on their first album, let's say whoever was putting their uh, album out in, well, at the time, let's say 86, Morbid Angel, Abomination to Desolation, which, again, they fucking hit that fucking rock star, let's go with the time shit, for sure, by Domination, but I would say even more so by Covenant, for sure. Uh, with uh, God of Emptiness video and it's just it's just very it's almost like a Hollywood feel, 
again, and I like I like Covenant. I mean, it's the worst thing in the goddamn catalog as far as good shit, uh, but it's still good. It's goddamn Macho Man fucking vocals, not the sick, deathy, fucking raspy vocals on uh, well, they were in the goddamn shirt. Ultra Madness, Thy Kingdom Come demo, and even half the fucking Blessed Are the Sick. You know, songs like the Ancient Ones and stuff like that, and then the other someone's. The other half's wrestler vocals, which I like the whole album entirely. But anyway, he's getting off goddamn topic. Um, a lot of bands like, yeah, so when the abominations are coming to shit, it's like there's just this raw fucking underground primitive feel. Hobbs Angel of Death, you know, you by the time they're putting out this, oh, this is the Slayer from fucking uh when the debut came out, it's the uh, Hobbs Angel of Death. This is the Slayer from fucking Australia, and Slayer was already kind of like were they on uh, South of Heaven? But if, if not, not far from it. And you're just kind of like, ah, man, I want this Hobbs. I want the, re it's like the real shit. Now that these JoJo's are going all commercial. Again, that doesn't mean I want to clarify because these fucking dummies, I know someone's going to say something stupid as fuck, but he talks about these bands. Like, what about Cannibal Hearts? Should he talk about talking about commercial shit? Commercial doesn't mean bad. It doesn't mean that at all. Underground doesn't mean good. It's just the whole feel and the lifestyle of the image, I just preferred the under underground mentality more. But yeah, some of the mainstream shit, if you want to call it that, is fucking better. For example, King Diamond Then is a mainstream album, technically speaking, which we're comparing it to goddamn fucking Hobbs Angel of Death, Slaughter Lord, and goddamn fucking uh, Repulsion Horrified, you know what I'm saying? That, 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 it's mainstream compared to that. But what do I like more? Do I like Hobbs Angel of Death more or King Diamond then? I like King Diamond then more. So don't come over here saying anything stupid. You guys take shit out of context. You see mainstream commercial. Oh, it's talking dog shit. That doesn't mean that. No, it's just I kind of wish these bands would have still kind of done these albums, but maybe had that underground attitude a little bit more. So what I'm getting at with this electrocutioner, that's how the uh the uh fucking nuke nucromancer. Came off as a little bit more underground feeling, and it was a little bit raw. And over this, uh, the the new track or whatever, um, it's on their uh, album that you said is coming out this year. And I'm listening to it. I'm like, it's already a little bit more polished. It was a good song. It was, it was good again. Just because it's more fucking commercialized feeling doesn't mean bad. It's just I could already see what's going. It's like, god damn, you guys just fucking started up, and you you get a little big for your britches. Granted, it's easy to do nowadays because of technology and shit like that. You can just do everything yourself. It's about, but just me personally, just out the gate, listening to this new band, two songs, I'm like, I like the more primitive one a little bit better. I did, it sounded better. Uh, it hit me a little bit harder. Um, but, you know, the commercial song, <laughs> for lack of better words, uh, I, it was still good. I enjoyed it. I was entertained. Not, not going to lie. Um, I will say this, too, is uh, what is with these young bucks, these new guys? And, and they got to be at this point. This is a phenomenon. I did not know it. I guess I knew existed, but I guess I didn't. But at the same part, it's maybe one of those things that you kind of knew in the back of your mind, but you never put much thought into it. But as at the, I'm no, noticing existent in recent times, specifically how my am finding it out is about uh, you guys sending me the uh, reviews, the paid questions, my favorite goddamn ones. What do you said, Jay? No, you said you only do reviews. I just said that's not my goddamn fucking favorite. Pay, paid no matter what is fucking my favorite, though. <laughs> so whatever you like, you want reviews or fucking ask how many times I take a shit a day, go where the fuck head. Paid is what I prefer. But it was since starting that, which is, I don't know, we went on with two, three months, when a lot of these you guys are sent up between Bandcamp and YouTube. It just says, and then I metal archives it, see what the, the homeboys are all about, which I did for them too, and I'll bring that up in a second. Uh, I'm like, what is, uh, what digital release, end, end label, independent? I'm like, what, what is, not that there's anything wrong with that. Do whatever the fuck you want. It's just, to me, like, for example, this electrocutioner, I did look at something that said they had a compilation cassette. Outside that, if they didn't have that, I didn't click on every link on metal archives, but I, Three out of seven of them or something like that. And digital, 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 digital. I'm like, so, so you guys have no material out. That that digital, that's not out in my opinion. Like, for example, the raw shit and the singles, I'm like, put out a seven inch, brah. And you know what? Like, just using them as an example, since that's what we're reviewing, a band like that, I wouldn't mind seeing, as weird as this might fucking may sound, that would earn kind of like cult status and maybe legendary status because it take years and years, but don't ever plan on making a, a living off your band, especially it would be just strictly a hobby, but I think you could earn like cult fucking cool points. I'm not even going to lie, even amongst myself. If this band like Electrocutioner is all they did, they never did a full light, they pull a sadistic intent, 
maybe put shit out a little bit more frequently than they fucking did. But like, do like a 12 inch maxi and then a bunch of seven inches, but all new studio songs and have like, honestly, in totality, maybe do one like every two years or so, or a year, about, about a year for seven inch. The next seven years or so, do like a seven inch with like two to, eh, yeah, two to four songs, depending on the length per seven inch. That's all you to put out. You don't put on no dumbass cassette or no dumbass fucking CD. 507 inches only. Sprinkle in a 12 inch maxi here and there. So like, let's say like uh, five to six songs, all new songs, studio goddamn recording, but a good raw fucking studio recording. Do that. After a few years, maybe do it for about 10 years, playing shows and shit like that, you know, selling your merchandise. After about 10 years, don't record anything. Pull Repulsion, just tour. I'm starting to conclude, dude, like, do a lot of these bands need to do albums anymore? Even bands I'm talking about that I like, when they've been around, like, let's call it like it is, especially, let's, let's, let's use a band as a better example so that we're not going to make an hour conversation out of it. Let's say a band, like, you know, one that I like previous albums by, let's say Morbid Angel, but I don't like what they currently do. Does Morbid Angel really need to do another album? No, it's like you can live off just literally tour, do what Repulsion does when they do shows. Scott Carlson even said it. They're not doing another. That's what Carcass needed to do. Went up to Swan Song, fine, whatever, should have been another band. Carcass, this we're back shit when they came back with Surgical Steel, which was fine, I own it. In my opinion, when Carcass came back, it should have been like, we're back, but all we're doing is tours. We're going to do U.S. tours, uh, European tours, Australian tours, whatever, all over. Because think about it. When you're going to their show, who the fuck is going there and being like, you know what, man, I sure hope they play so-and-so off Torn Arteries. Man, these five songs off fucking Surgical Steel, fuck me dead. I just can't wait to hear. And then they leave out all the goddamn classics. You go there, if you're lucky, you, you get a fucking genital grinder, which is a goddamn fucking instrumental. And to be completely honest, if you fucking hit the lottery these days, they might do a uh, pile sissified rotten to the gore. Uh, talking about Reek. I don't think you get jack shit else. You ain't getting no goddamn maggot colony, regurgitation of giblets, microwave uterine gestation, feast on dismembered fucking carnage. You ain't getting any of that shit. Psychopathologist, one of the best goddamn songs in the catalog. I've never heard them fucking bozos do live ever. Bunch of fucking fucktards in that camp. But, dude, who the fuck is going to see any of their later shit? Now, don't get me wrong. Someone's going to come over here and say something stupid as fuck, because they always the fuck do, and be like, well, Dad, I don't know. I like that album. I, I kind of like to see some of these songs. First off, there are two categories for that. Number one, you're fucking 19 years old, so we already, what do we conclude about 19? Tape on that mouth shut. Opinion's fucking irrelevant when it comes to the class. So, just don't even bother waste your time typing anything. Or two, okay, yeah, you are in that category. I'm the same. For example, like, I like every Cannibal Corpse album. When I go see them next, am I like, holy fuck, I hope they do this and that off Violence Unimagined and Chaos Horrific. I'm thinking for Chaos Horrific, here's what I hope they fucking do. Well, here's what I hope they do. Okay, they do that because I would like to see one song every album. Violence, do a Surround, Kill, Devour. I think that's the best song on the album. Seems like nobody fucking agrees. The band don't agree either because I don't think they've ever played that live. They're, every time my favorites, New Campbell comes out, they never fucking do it live. Like for example, the last in the, since the last past decade, <coughs> <coughs> best Cannibal Corpse album in the last decade, in my humble ass opinion, is a Skeletal Domain banger of an album. That's a motherfucking ten. That's up there with the goddamn greats of the Cannibal catalog. But for example, have they ever done High Velocity Impact Splatter, the opening track? I didn't see it. Not saying they didn't do it on the rest of the tour, but I didn't fucking see it. The new album. I think the best fucking song is definitely the title track, Chaos Horrific, and um, Overlords of Violence, the opening track. Two best songs. Do they do either? Somebody did send me the current track list, which I know is a shorter track list with uh, Mayhem. Somebody sent it to me. I don't think I saw those on there. I think I saw the singles that were released, which I thought those songs were good, not great. What I'm getting at, going back to fucking carcasses, even myself, Okay, I like these later albums, but I'm I'm thinking in the back of my mind, dude, I want to see Meat Hook Sodomy. I want to see Edible Autopsy. Man, imagine they play Buried in the Backyard. Holy fuck, Ski. 
Dude, my fucking head will explode with greatness if they play Necropedophile, which you know damn well they ain't going to do. I'm thinking shit like that. And I definitely want to hear me some perverse suffering again. From Mod Valley, which they used to be as a short guy. The thing is, they can so easily squeeze it in. It's less than two fucking minutes. So, not what did I, not, no, Punctual Massacre is what I meant. Punctual Massacre, I definitely want to, I do want to hear perverse. Perverse suffering is probably my favorite album, the song of the album, but. Uh, Puncture Wound is up there, and it's the quick fucking banger, the goddamn killer ass lyrics that are hard to fucking follow with the speed, but they're fucking great once you can. It's fucking punctual, so like a motherfucker. You know, the opening line, stab, hack, slash, quill. But Puncture Wound, it's under two minutes. Why can't you guys squeeze that in there? I mean, I politely told George in the goddamn interview, and you know, he walked away with that shit. Does he remember what the fuck I look like? I'm sure. But I'm, they're not doing it, but I'm just a why not? So even myself, that's what I'm getting with. These bands coming out, what do you really need to do another album? You don't. So some of these young guys, like Electrocutioner, do what you want. Some just dog tips, of course, because, and hey, want to be original, goddammit. Dude, like I said, don't do any fucking albums. Honestly, there's more air for fuck up anyways than goddamn albums. And yeah, do a few handful of seven inches, because let's say you did five seven inches, and let's say two to three songs, no, three to fuck, two to three shit. You're, you're not running six, seven minute songs, that's how many, how many minutes you get per seven inch. Run probably three to four minutes every song. So that your shit. So you get you got a little bit of longer three to four songs. God damn it. So let's just say on the lower end, you got that's that's let's say on the low end three out songs five seven. It says fifteen songs. Do a, a twelve inch maxi six songs. That's twenty one songs. And then maybe like at the end of ten years, spring one another twelve inch maxi five six songs. That gives you fucking, like, with the three, four songs added on the low, low end, say there's a couple that have four, you have 30 songs. None of these bands are playing 30 fucking songs live anyways. So now, what happens? You have an unjunk-filled catalog. Any of your show you go, your fans, they can hear, there's a very good chance they can hear their song because you could cycle your whole entire goddamn song list over the years, you know what I mean, doing tours and shit like that. Oh, look, these last eight shows we played these, uh, 13 songs, let's play the next 13. These 13 that we have. It's pretty much covering the whole catalog. Think how goddamn cool that would fucking be. Your shit's collectible as fuck. Who the fuck's doing that? Nobody. That's why, but dude, everyone that knows, people that are in the fucking know, not fucking idiots that claim they're in the metal, they never heard of Sadistic Intent. Guys that go to Sadistic Intent, think about it. They have, when you they don't have any material. No, they don't have any fucking full lengths. At this point, I'm kind of glad they don't. It's kind of cool. But when you add up all their seven inches, EPs, the uh, Ancient Black Earth Maxi and the goddamn uh, Resurrection. They have what you probably brought what I said, probably about 30 songs. You go there, there's still a lot of songs you don't see. It's all everybody knows. Everybody in the know knows. You go see Sadistic Intent. They're fucking great. A real metal fucking band. Take notes, fucking Frozen Soul. <laughs> you don't see them telling you to do push ups in the pits. Just, just fucking saying. There's a huge goddamn difference of atmosphere and they of, of what kind of atmosphere there is in the air when you go see sadistic intent and you go see these fucking homeboys. Just motherfucking saying. Try doing that. Because electrocutioner, what they have is um looking at them, uh dude, yeah, they got like it's like they got 20 goddamn releases almost, but the start 21 single in 2021, uh under the microscope. The switch is on, single, but then you click on it. This is on Metal Archives, by the way. Ind independent, digital. So, so it's not out, brah. And then their False Idols, which that has their, uh, what was that song called again? Yeah, Seven Laps of Fire. I will kind of say this, too. Uh, I'm not crazy about the cover art. It feels very, their whole look. It's, it seems very generic, like what you would expect from a 2000s up band that's trying to be old school. Where it's kind of like that, um, the early bands that were started. When you look at bands like Toxic, we're not talking about the mighty Toxic Holocaust, goddamn it. Where it's just this tutti fruity, just kind of like just, just, just safe zone, but not, not sports jerseys and dumb shit. So it's like, yeah, it is metal, but it just has this very, very, you can take it home and show mom it, and she'd be okay. So I'm not crazy about that, but not again. At that, it's not a, that's not a huge turnoff. It's just what I'm getting at is the aesthetic is not 
my cup of tea. I will say this in their new full length. It is kind of like, who these fucking momos think they are? It's got one, two, three, four fucking instrumentals. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but fuck me dead, dude. That's a pinch fucking overkill. Just saying. Do what you want. Don't care. But that's that's a Just give my goddamn critique because I was goddamn paid to do it. Uh, look at the goddamn band photo here. I'll say this. Fucking goddamn. The guy on the left. I'll get rid of the fucking backwards hat. But other than that, that motherfucker has class. I must say, that is one fine ass looking t shirt. He's got the old school sacred right crimes against humanity. Um, the guy in the middle, he's, he's got something going on. He's got that very okay Black Sabbath Dehumanizer uh, t shirt on. Album that's got some bangers on there for sure, but definitely some filler tracks. And then the guy on the right, what the fuck are you doing, bro? It's a goddamn press photo. CBGB shirt. So, okay, cool. So, so in other words, you, you like to play drums or whatever instrument you're playing, but you don't collect records, not in the metal. You're only into your own stuff for getting, uh, trying to get laid by chicks. Got it. That screams at me. That's not me, bro. I got fucking two more records that you can count. I can fucking school you all day. I'm out. Great. But me looking at you, you don't look like that. That's all. All, all I'm saying. Goddamn tips. Again, if you're fucking, you just crawled out of bed, you threw that fucking t-shirt on, you're picking up your goddamn, uh, goddamn McGriddle at McDonald's and McCafe Cafe in the goddamn drive through and that's what you had on. Fine, I get it. I'm not saying you have to be goddamn metal head to toe 24 fucking 7, but fuck me dead when you get the goddamn call. Hey, brah, we're doing goddamn band photos for today. You throw on a goddamn, a fucking beanie and a CBGB shirt. Rubbing the dog the wrong way. Again, don't fucking care. Wear what you want. Do what you fucking want. I'm just giving the full goddamn fucking review. Take it or leave it. Don't give a shit either fucking way. Tape on that mouth. Shut up. You got a bitch-ass fucking reply. Uh, so, yeah. Full length, I guess, isn't even out yet. It says... No, it's not even out yet, technically. So, to their defense, maybe that's why it's digital only. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. The cover, like I said, again, it screams High Roller Records 2,000 plus uh, bands, like trying to fit the bill. Um, so maybe High Roller's putting out, but it doesn't say a label on here. But he says October 13th, 2023. But, it, dude, if this comes out as digital only, that's dumb as fuck. Again, I did listen to one song. I thought it was pretty good. Seven Lamps of Fire. Uh, I liked your singles a little bit better. Had a little bit more oomph to them as far as uh, rawness and pit goddamn metal goddamn bill of underground as far as I'm concerned. But, uh, I, I mean, I would check it out. Somebody wants to send me as well. Again, I'm not sitting there listening to some digital dumbass shit all fucking goddamn day. That's, that, that's, that's poser shit, bro, bro. I listen to physical format. Um, I'll check shit out for like this, uh, things like that, or listen to stuff at the gym. But for the most part, if I if it's if I'm maybe a fan of the band, I just want to own something, man. I don't know. It's just to me, if you don't have a hard copy, it's not. It, it doesn't exist. What I'm getting at, if you actually put out a CD or something like that, I mean, I'll I'll definitely check the album out in its entirety. We can talk about it. So if the band's interested in that, or uh, yeah, it doesn't need to be you, Layla Lover. You got no, you got no fucking horse in the race, unless unless you know these guys or something. Um, I just get the vibe that you're an, a metal enthusiast, as am I, and uh, you're just kind of like, fuck yeah, I heard this band, I really, really like them, and I just want to hear what J-Dog take is. Honestly, that, that's awesome. That I'm, I'm flattered you care that much, and fucking <laughs> free advertising for them homeboys, right? Nothing else. I like that guy's right shirt. I used to have one, too. I bought a, a used copy on eBay years ago when I was, I was in high school still, so I think I was 17 years old, and I scored off. Oh, fuck. The Crimes Against Humanity shirt. It was a used copy I bought from somebody that bought it at the show in the, on the uh, American Way Tour. and uh, But it was a size medium then. But I wore the shit out of it. It was already used. And kind of, But it had no holes or nothing like that in it. And I, I wore that motherfucking thing with pride. So it's just kind of cool. I used to have that goddamn design. What somebody needs to do is scan that. If you have an original, scan it in and fucking bootleg it. Dog will buy a goddamn replica bootleg of that. I always loved that Sergeant Reich shit. You know, that was their, that was their character. You know, like Misfits has Crimson Ghosts. Dunslaughter is the goddamn devil head. Iron Maiden has Eddie. Yeah, you know, you know the fuck I mean. Um, Sacred Reich had Sergeant Reich. You know what I mean? SRD, you think uh, Sergeant D? I always loved the Sergeant Reich shit. You know what I mean? So when they had those other designs for the tours and stuff, that was just for that tour. That's was, that was cool as fuck, man. That's their character. That's their mascot. You know what I mean? So, um, I don't know. That's just me. But again, I'm very, very biased because the Reich is what fucking got me into all the goddamn shit. Ignorance and Surf Nicaragua tapes. 10 years old, goddamn it. So, and then, and now you look at it, as far as the metal journey, it was all <laughs> uphill or downhill from there. <laughs> Depends on what your stance on this shit is. So, yeah. So, 
Shout out to Electrocutioner. Uh, I think it was pretty goddamn good. Uh, I, by the way, I sent links over to uh, C Dog and Easy E. On like uh, C Dog, I, I try not to gatekeep all the audios. Said all them. I was like, maybe a band Hell's interested in them. Maybe not. Don't don't get a boner yet, Rob Ross. Our, our release schedule's booked as fuck. I just thought, you know, this is a cool new thrash band. Seen all this dumbass digital shit. Apparently, they need some of this stuff. Uh, but don't get your hopes up. Chasey Boy doesn't like anything, so <laughs> I'm sure it's gonna be a no. I just said I'm I'm cool either way. If we do it, we do it. I thought it was pretty good. The two songs I listened to. If we don't, I'm not, not heartbroken. I mean, I, it's not like the most great greatest thing I've ever heard. Um, for fans of you know, eh, kind of the 2000 plus thrash. I say toxic Holocaust, a little bit of municipal waste on the new song Seven Lamps. The uh, highs. Uh, it reminded me of Ghoul. Off uh, splatter thrash, stuff like that. So there's there was sprinkled in influence, but it sound like it didn't sound completely like any one band. It was a mix of the fucking two thousands thrash with uh from the two songs I heard, pretty good songwriting, and it seems like guys that uh, that can uh, play uh, their instruments well. So definitely respectable shit, and I recommend checking them out. Uh, it definitely does not suck by by any fucking stretch of the goddamn definition. So it's not a complete waste of time to fucking check out. So. Check them out and put in the comments. What the fuck do you think? And anything else you got, put it in there, goddammit, and see you tomorrow. Later.